Good morning, Tubers, and uh, this is a not very realistic reenactment of what happened this morning. Uh, I woke up, I was in bed, um, I was, and cell 56 has gone low. I mean, they're all pretty bloody average, but cell 56 is low and my battery's turned off. Let's go down and have a look whether I've got another hot cell there or we just got a bad cell with a 10 millimeter and a five millimeter, I believe, Allen key. We walk very, very quickly. Sheds open. Let's go and get a thermal camera. Cell 56, tell me your secrets. There is something back there, I guess. Now we're in a low state of charge, so it makes it a lot harder to see heat. Because the more voltage we have, and thank you very much, motorbike, the more voltage we have, the hotter she is. But there's nothing there. So it must just mean we've got a weak battery. We're gonna pull it out and check it over. Before I actually pull that cell out, I'm gonna show you what I do to keep my bait train up and running, because this is a string so if I take out that battery, this ent well, that cell monitor, this entire string disappears. So without reconfiguring the bait trim, all that I do is come down here and very, very carefully, and I do state very carefully, um, what do I do? I take this one out of here and take this one from the one beside it Take it out of there, so I've got a little bit more length. Now I had a plan, I was gonna show you on how all this works and how you can keep this up and running again, but then I remembered cell 56 is number, well, 56 is the last one. So that's actually soldered in. So these two negatives and positives are soldered in. <laughs> so I've got to actually take out that whole battery and then desolder it. Oh, that can be done. Ryobi to the rescue. Even that only took a few minutes. That's out. And look at that. It's a sea of Sanyo. Oh, there's not too many of these left. Oh, look at that. Have some corrosion on that one and that one. I think it's time for a timing, old girl. Back up at my workshop, what I realized was I do have something written on this one 16th of the 5th, 2020, and 153 amp hours. I think the very first thing we should do is test that or retest that. So I've got my little test jig set up here. This little iCharger X8, probably one of the best devices on the market. And then my shed power wall. If you have a look here, it's about 4.6 volts. It's just been sitting there for about six months unused. So now I have got my power hooked up. Got a little, what is that, XT60 connector that brings my negative and positive out to my iCharger. So I can actually do charge and recharge regen tests. Scroll down to the bottom, start, yes. Yeah, come back in a few hours, that'll be fully charged. Just heard the unmissable beats. 4.199 volts. She's only just finished. She took just on seven hours to do a full charge. Now that's 153.72 amp hours. Hundred and fifteen watts. Let's go. Well, there we have it. Four hours and forty-five minutes later, we got one hundred and forty-one point nine amp hours. Not bad at all. We've got a resting voltage there of three point three five volts. 
Asanyos are more typically related to the heaters. I've only ever had one Samsung INR, or was it uh, ICR 18650, uh, Panasonic, sorry, cell actually go a heater. That's the only one other one I've ever had go a heater. Now I did have a hot one the other day. It was up the top and there's a long one there. And I would say it was one of these. I had to reach in and snip the cable. That one there by the look of it. No, that one's still connected. I did disconnect one, but it should be a zero volt cell. So let's have a look at that first. Three, three. Now, if you had an accurate enough multimeter, you could tell the voltage drop without snipping your um, your fuse wires or your link wires. So 3.3, 3.3, 3.3. It's odd, that one's 3.7. So it stands to reason the fuse on the other side of that cell has gone bad. So that's the negative end. We'll check that in a minute. 3.3. Worse is I snipped a cable on this and I checked it like four times in four days and I didn't have a heater anymore. Yet I've got no zero volt cells. That is odd. Unless it was like a... Um, Oh, I missed the snip, but it was a cold joint or something and moving the wire around a bit gave it a better connection and didn't get so hot with high resistance. That's a stretch, but it must be, there's got to be something that, that, that says it. I did a short the other day. Okay, so we've only got that cell there that's 3.7. There's that one. 3.3. Three point five, three point five. So that was is what is it? Three point three six, three point three. Bad connection on that side. I don't know how you get a higher voltage from a bad connection. I'm not doing the wrong one. Maybe my finger was on it or something. Yeah, anyway, grab the thermal camera again. First, that was not apparent when I did the, the thermal test down the bottom there. But it may be because if I turned it this way, you know, you can still see it. I wonder if my thermal camera was playing up. Oh, we got two. We got two heaters in this one. So maybe we don't need to replace the whole battery. Maybe we just need to replace a few cells. So we've got that one, which is the one that was 3.7. So we snipped that wire. And this one is the one that I thought that was hot last time can't tell the, the heat difference. Oh, wait a minute, no, that one's hot. It's a pink cell that's hot. Thermal camera's a little bit out. So it's a pink cell here that's hot. So let's snip that one as well. We'll see if we can get a temperature difference between the two with the thermal camera. So that's saying that's 39. Saying it's 39, I just don't know. And the one either side of it, is 30 almost 30 and the one that side of it 29 30 and 38 and this is how thermal this is how the thermal reaction starts so that cell gets hot and it keeps getting hot it stays hot it stays hot for weeks on end and then it gets hotter and hotter and hotter. As it gets hotter and hotter and hotter, it actually increases the, the, the time it takes to actually damage the internal of the cell. And all of these cells, all these 80 cells, keep dumping energy into this cell. And the whole thought was that this little fuse wire 
would stop and blow and stop this from happening. That's not the case and has never actually been the case. I've never seen that fuse blow when I've got a hot cell. And this one just keeps getting hotter and hotter and hotter. And in turn, the cells around it, the five cells in this case around it, start getting hotter and hotter. And this is probably worse when it's actually in the middle. So it's got cells all the way around it. Now this one's getting hotter and the outside cells are starting to become sort of heat soaked. They start taking the heat on from the cells around it. So this one gets even hotter itself because it can't get rid of the heat. And this just keeps going and going and going. All the cells around the, the, the five cells around the outside of it get warmer again. And this one, meanwhile, is getting worse and worse and worse until this one goes thermal. And that's when thermal runaway starts. So this one goes off. These ones are already hot because they've been heated from this one for the last six months, six weeks, six years, however long you haven't noticed it for. And then those go. And then the ones around it goes until the entire thing just goes well, it doesn't explode, it just goes thermal. So we'll leave those ones out for a few hours. We'll come back and then we will test the entire battery and then we'll see how long it takes for these cells to go zero volts. Well, that's a completely unexpected result. Um, I've got you so you can see both here at the moment. That cell there is zero volts already. The one beside it. 3.3, the one the other side of it is 3.3 and that one is completely zero volts. They're not going to work. Okay, we've got a couple more cells here we've charged up. So we got some NCR 18650s. Oh, I think they're Panasonic cells. That's what I was referring to earlier. And they're all being tested at about 2,500 milliamp hours. So they're still good cells. Um, we're going to replace this one we're going to replace these two and what i was referring to earlier this cell here i didn't realize because you know you're on camera and you're trying to do all the things at once that one was disconnected and is also zero volts so that cell there had a problem and that's likely the one from the other day that i disconnected um given that it's been torn out there and then we're going to replace that cell that cell that cell which is a zero volt and was heating before and then this pink cell here. Um, it's odd that we have a, I don't even know what brand that is, maybe a Samsung um, cell that's gone heater, but that's fine. Okay, with that, we're gonna change it out. And the way we do that is we've got the fuses on this side and the heavier wire on this side. So the heavier wire has the strength about it. So what I do is I push this, I, I remove the solder and take the, um, the fuses or whatever off. And then on this side, I'll snap out the little triangles because on this side, it's got the heavier wire to actually hold it in so the cells aren't gonna move. And then all that I do is push the cell up and through, replace them with these cells, resolder them in. Uh, now these ones have been balanced to this battery pack. They're within about 0 0.02 of a volt of each other. So we'll get that done, put this back into production and see where we end up. She's all back in service. She's been back in service for about two days now and Batrim's doing its thing. Uh, it's back in there again, cell 56, so we only changed four cells. Uh, after a capacity test, we got one amp hour more capacity, but I'm happy with that, right? As long as it doesn't actually slowly ratchet down with the, the heater cells, and I will keep an eye on that. So tubers, thank you very much for tuning in, and I'll see you on the next one.